in uh, Joshua, the eighth chapter. We're talking about reverse tactic, but also I want to focus in on distraction. Because the enemy likes to distract us, and then he attack us. Mm -hmm. And so, since we understand this concept, because what the enemy uh, is doing now is what Joshua used to destroy the city of Ai. But God gave him that counsel. The first time they went down to Ai, this is the campaign to take over uh, 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 the land of Canaan and the promised land. And in this, Joshua, uh, they went down to Ai the first time, and when they had a campaign against Ai, they failed because, one, uh, there was sin in the camp, and second, they didn't consult God. So before you take on some um, adventure or you take on something, you need to consult the Lord. Get his understanding of what he wants you to do. And things will be a lot much better. Be grateful for you. So uh, this was also the place where Joshua got his first defeat, but also he learned a lesson off of that, that uh, going with God is better than going without God. And so with that being said, uh, sometimes we get so distracted on trying to accomplish something, we forget to consult the Lord. We forget to seek his counsel. So in each chapter, uh, the enemy began to use this strategy against, um, uh, I'm sorry, Joshua used this strategy against Ai, but now the enemy is using the strategy against us because he's getting us distracted, and while we're distracted, we're leaving our homes exposed. Amen? We're leaving not only our home, but our finance and our dreams and our future exposed. Because we're distracted on so many other things and not on God. Right. If we put our focus on God, we'll be, we'll be less distracted. And then we can accomplish his purpose. And we can accomplish our assignment. Yeah. And so with that being said, uh, let's look at verse 5 and 6 in Joshua 8 chapter. And it says, And I and all, of, all the people that are with me, will approach unto the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us, as at the first, that we will flee from, we will flee before them. For they will come out after us, till we have drawn them from the city, for they will say, they flee before us, and as the first, therefore we will flee before them. See, the enemy want to draw you away from your assignment. So you can expose your own. So you can expose Things that you, you, you value. When you are not guarding against it, you're exposing it. It's really simple. If you're not putting up prayer in your house, the enemy has access to your house then. You need to put up a, a fence of prayer around your house. These people decided to leave what was important to them, and sometimes we don't realize what's important until we lose it. If they really truly value it, instead of chasing after the people of Israel, they would have gone up their house and said, look, they're running from us. Let's just make sure we stay guard here. Because it could be a tactic that draws us away from our assignment. Hello. Our assignment is charity begins at home. So we need to start at home. Sometimes we're spreading ourselves so thin. We're doing things for everybody. Hallelujah, the home going like it. Or the kingdom going like it. We so focused on getting rich. <laughs> we, we so focused on setting ourselves up. Hallelujah, but if God is in it, God's going to make a way for you anyhow. That's right. That's right. And so here, these people got distracted. What they valued the most was inside the city. But yet still, they ran out of the city chasing something else. Just because you beat the enemy once don't mean that you can beat him again using them same tactics. Because if he's as cunning as they say he is, then he's going to do something different the next time. Because if he can always get you using the same tactic, he will. If you never grow and mature, he'll keep on fooling you in the same area. Hello? You know, sometimes the enemy just wait on you to get distracted. Today, you all prayed up because it's Wednesday. It's Bible study. Sunday, you all prayed up because it's Sunday morning service. 
But Monday come along, you done got distracted. So the enemy waiting on Tuesday because he know you less, you less focused than you was on Monday. Come on. And so he said, you know what, you fine right now because you got some residue from Sunday on Monday. But by the time Monday and Tuesday come around, you done wore it all out. And so he sat there and waited on Tuesday to show up. And then he captured you right there, put you in bondage again. Then we got to pray you out on Wednesday. Oh, come on, y'all can talk. Yep. Hallelujah. We got to pray you out on Wednesday now. We got to bring a word. Hallelujah. That should have kept you. The word that was on Sunday should have kept you all the way through the week. All right. If you put some preparation in it, if you spend some time in it, if you go back and meditate in it. But we get so distracted. Why? Because football season. Hello. The women should say amen. Because some of the women doing it too. Hello. But there's so many things distracting. It's amazing how church get turned out real early on Sundays now. <laughs> Hello. Oh, a pastor. Could you make sure you preach short today? Them cowboys playing. <laughs> Them Steelers playing. Mm -hmm. Them Atlanta Falcons playing. Mm -hmm. and, and so they get they want to come out. Or they'll skip church if they think we long with it. <laughs> It's amazing how they stay focused on football, but can't stay focused on the word. Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody give me an amen on that one. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the enemy is using these tactics. He, he's using the, the tactic of distraction so that you don't stay focused, and then he draws you away, and then the further you get away from God, hallelujah, the more vulnerable you are. Ooh, Lord, hallelujah. The less words you read, and don't, don't they say, uh, 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 if you uh, pray without a week, make one week? If you don't pray in a week, it'll make you weak. Huh? So if you go without praying, hallelujah, you're getting weaker. You go without reading your word, you're getting weaker. These things that normally wouldn't distract you or get you off assignment or get you off focus are now getting you off focus. Yep. It's amazing. We the most holiest people uh, between 11 and 1 <laughs> on Sundays. Hallelujah. We're real. We all holy dead. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high. And then, oh, son. Oh, it's 1 15 now. I can take off church. Jesus. Come on. I can put back on my religion now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Come on. I don't want to talk right now. I, I heard people say, I take off my religion. Yeah, because you can take religion on and off all you want. But if you got the Spirit of God in you, you just can't take it on and off when you want to. We got too much religious folks. Praise God. Amen. But watch this. I, I want to go to a bigger concept right here. If you will follow me for the next 20 minutes, I promise you, I'm going to deal with three points that I want to show you something about uh, the enemy distracting you. And you got to stay focused. One thing is, uh, when there's a major campaign, because we're in spiritual warfare, we, no matter what people may think, we're still in spiritual warfare. And, and when you're trying to conquer your promised land, as if they was trying to conquer Canaan, the first thing they had to do was do three campaigns. They broke up the whole uh, promised land into three parts. And I like this is because it reveals something about what God's plan is for us. The first thing they had to deal with, uh, Joshua had to deal with the central campaign. That means the central part of their promised land, they had to deal with it. Central means what's around you. If you catch this here, it's going to bless you. Central means what's around you. The first part that God deal with is the part of Jericho and Ai. Jericho was significant because it was a it was a city that God had delivered them out of. And they did nothing to accomplish it. It was all God. All right. And I liken that to your salvation. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Any nothing you've done is what God done. Right. So Jericho was a type of salvation. Okay. AI is where you walk in at. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to talk right here. That's to be the, uh, the place of your first defeat. Mm. If you don't listen to God. <clears throat> oh, come on. But then if you get back on track, it can be your place of victory. Right. So 
Because Central Campaign deals with things that are around you. And the first part of it is you got to get saved, and then you start dealing with stuff around you. Go ahead. So just like Jericho, God gets you saved. He delivers you. He sets you free. And then after that, he gives you opportunity yes. to be victorious. I thought I'd get some amens right there. Amen. I'm giving y'all a revelation word Amen. right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and because of this concept of being a central campaign, I, I'm liking this to war. So they said, look here, we're going to break up the promised land into three parts. The first part is going to be the central part, and we're going to deal with that. And then the next thing we got to do is the southern part. And then we're going to deal with the northern part. Well, since I've been talking about the central part, let's deal with the southern part. The southern part is what be, what's below you. Or in other words, what's below the surface. Okay. Y'all don't want to talk to me up in here today. What do you mean by what's below the surface? See, when God brings you out, and you don't deal with what's around you. Now, you, you don't got to deliver from alcohol. You don't got to deliver from drugs. But now, you have to deal with the southern campaign, which is the stuff that is hidden, the stuff that's below the surface. What caused you to drink in the first place? Mm, all right now. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. So, the southern campaign is dealing with those issues that pushed it out to the central campaign. The stuff that was in the middle that you got out, Oh, on our surface side, but now we have to deal with these issues so we don't go back to them. Because God gave you the script to come out of it, but now he got to give you the wisdom to stay out of it. Oh, Lord, come on. Over so the Southern Campaign is dealing with stuff that's below the surface. You ain't no drunk because you just drinking a bunch of alcohol. You are drunk because you never dealt with that hurt. You never dealt with that betrayal. Right. And you went to these things, oh, come on, to give you a temporary release. Go ahead. And God released you from that when you got saved. But now he's giving you wisdom. He said, look here, you got to deal with the issue now. Right. If not, you want to revert back to it. Amen. That's why so many people are coming to church, hallelujah, and they're never dealing with the issues. They don't want the surface stuff. They don't want to get below the surface. Because get below the surface, deal with you. That way you don't go back. It's not about we had church. It's about church in me. That's right. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. I think I'm preaching now. Let me go back to teaching. Preach. <laughs> Ooh, so the southern campaign deals with what's below. So the first campaign was the central of your promised land. That's the one God is working on and you're working on. But now he's taking you to a deeper level. He's giving you victory at AI. Right. Even though you have a failure there also. So he taught you a lesson, right? With God, we can do all things. With God, it's not possible. And then he takes you on down. He says, all right, son, let's go on down to a deeper part. Look at somebody and say, go deeper. Let's go down to the southern campaign. Let's deal with this underlying surface stuff. That's why psychologists get paid so much. And psychiatrists. Because they get all they get below your surface on some issues. Oh, come on. People pay big bucks to go and sit on a couch. Yep. Well, today I got a couch came back in my office. Because when I start counseling you, I want to get down up under the surface of stuff. You can come in and act like all stuff is all good, but when we get up that, when you get off that couch, we're going to deal with you. We're going to get down to some real issues. You know, I had some marriage counseling, I had some single counseling, I had some different people sit on the, inside my office, and, and they, they, they start off on the surface. Always point that other person. And then I'm always reversing that finger back to them. Since it's your finger, you need to uh, take ownership of it. Hallelujah. And point it back at yourself. That's all right. What have I done wrong? Yeah. How, how, how am I am, uh, in error in this way? And so therefore, he said, get to the surface. Get under the surface. Deal with these issues and the pains and the problem of stuff that's really surfacing up. And we always dealing with the symptoms, symptoms, and never the issues. Come on, 
You got to treat the disease. You can't treat the symptoms. You might even give me, a, I got a headache, and you give me an aspirin, you're dealing with the symptoms. But you need to find out what's really causing these migraines or these headaches. If not, I'm just going to be stuck. Oh, come on. On medication. I'm just going to be stuck on stuff that just deal with my symptoms. But never set me free. Hallelujah. I'm teaching better y'all saying amen up in here. I think I'm going to go find me another church. Facebook Live. You're going to be my next church, praise God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen out of y'all on Facebook Live? Because I ain't getting too many amens up in here. But don't worry about it. <laughs> amens don't make me. That's just like likes on Facebook. Okay. Hallelujah. I, I'm not built up just off the likes, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not built up off the amens as long as God is in agreement. All right, watch this here. So we dealt with the first campaign, which was the central, over on the land of the promised land, right? That was the middle part. That's the part deal with us. That's the surface. That's the right of Then we went down into the campaign of the southern campaign, right? And start dealing with those underlying issues that was pushing up to our central campaign, that was coming out and manifesting that's around us. Amen? I'm good. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. And then now, we got to say, go up. Somebody look at somebody and say, go up. Go up. Come on, say it with some conviction. Go up. Go up. If we don't went down and dealt with the issues, now we got to go up. Because when you went down, you start dealing with why you got a problem with your finance. When you were just dealing with your central part, you recognize there was a problem. Right? Then when you went to your southern campaign, you found out the root cause of what was causing all of your holes in your pockets. Causing you not to have money and being broke all the time, right? You realized that you had a spending issue. You really had a money issue. You had a spending issue. You didn't have no problem with money. You just had a problem keeping it. Hallelujah. So once you dealt with that issue and realized it was about self-esteem, I had a low self-esteem and thought that a stuff, a materialistic stuff, was going to make my value, was going to give me my self-worth. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. And so I, I kept buying more stuff. And I was all, the more stuff I buy, the less worth I felt. Well, somebody should say amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter how many uh, jewelries I had and how many watches and shoes and, and, and I ain't got no dresses, so y'all don't get it twisted. <laughs> and I ain't got no pocketbooks, don't get it twisted either. But I'm just using that as an example. You brought all these things and you said, oh man, if I get this Gucci pocketbook, if I get this MK watch, then I'm going to feel great. And I'm going to always show it. You know when people get stuff, they always let you know they got it. Yep. Even if they don't vocalize it. Or verbalize it. They, they, they'll put it up. What time is it? Oh, you want to know what time it is? My MK <laughs> tells me it's this time. Because you think that the value of you is determined by how much you pay for that watch. How much you pay for those clothes. How much you pay for those shoes. How much you pay for that dress. How much you pay for your car. But that's not the value of who I am. Hallelujah. My value is not determined by that. Look at somebody say it's not determined by that. Hallelujah. My value is in God. In my relationship with him. He loved me before I even knew him. Even when I was in my simple way, God knew me and loved me. And he esteemed me. Even when I was in sinful sin, yet still he loved me. Because he saw my value. He saw my worth. Just because a diamond is in mud still don't change the value of a diamond. That's right. It's just dirt. But anybody washing up, oh, look at it, this thing shining. Don't y'all know those diamonds was dying up under all that pressure? Buried up under all that dirt. Hallelujah. But somebody reached down there and pulled it out. And then they polished it up. And all of a sudden, you now see the, 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 the end results of it and thinking it was worth so much more. But it was worth the same amount as it was polished, as it was unpolished. It was still a diamond. Oh, yeah, I want to talk right there. Okay. 
Let's move on because I only got 10 more minutes. Look at somebody say, we're going up. <laughs> because once you done dealt with that, I, I'm using finance right now just so you can get a clarity of what I'm trying to show you on these three campaigns and in going into your promised land in the book of Joshua, the eighth chapter. Watch this. So they dealt with the central. They went down to the southern um, campaign, and now they're going to the northern campaign. Because in your, you, you, you dealt with the service stuff and realized that money wasn't your, your problem, that you had an issue with spending. And now you dealt with those issues. Now you're going up and wonder why blessings ain't flowing your way. Watch this. Because there's a campaign in the north. Principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Y'all don't want to talk to me up in here. Hallelujah, it's spiritual warfare now. If some stuff is, that should be coming you ain't coming, it's because there's an attack up above. Yeah. Let me help y'all out. In the northern campaign when Joshua was going in the land of Canaan, it tells me that uh, they went into alliance when they heard about what Israel was doing. And so everybody in the northern campaign came into agreement to stop Israel from going up. Y'all want to talk right here. Hallelujah. There's things that are lined up against you to stop your blessing. But I come here today to tell you, hallelujah, no matter what devil in the, prison, in, in, in the atmosphere, no matter what devil, hallelujah, that's coming up against you, it's not going to stop what God has for you. There's a blessing that's going to break through. We find an example in the Bible. We find that when um, Daniel was praying, the Bible say that when the angel finally came through, broke through principality, broke through power, broke through spiritual wickedness in the high places. And came down and brought an answer to Daniel. He said, I will, I heard, God heard you on the first day. But I had to fight with the prince of Persia. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. In other words, I had to fight a spiritual fight in the northern campaign. Me, Michael and Gabriel, we had to fight. We had to tag team uh, 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 Satan. We had to take, because Satan was represented by Persia. Mm -hmm. And he said, he's strong. Don't get me wrong. The devil got some power now. Yeah. Hallelujah. He, he got some cunningness. You just can't come up against him any kind of way. It took two archangels to fight against him. That's right. And while one was fighting, the other one brought through the blessing. Mm -hmm. my God, my God. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to get it to you. I don't care what's standing in your way. I'm going to get it to you. I'm going to bring it to you. It's going to get to you. Yes, sir. I said, Lord, hallelujah. So, in that campaign, back to the natural side of it, when Joshua went up into the northern part of the, of the land of Canaan, into the promised land, it was a formidable army. Because all the cities up there say, look here, if we stand by ourselves, we ain't going to be victorious. Right. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Can somebody say it's amazing? It's amazing. It's amazing how the enemy can come in unison, in unity, and we as God's people can't come together. That's right. You're going to say it. If I ain't our program, we ain't showing up. That's right. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. If our church ain't starting, we ain't going to hook up with your church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all want to talk yeah, right there. But the devil realized that uh, the Bible tells us Jesus gave a, a, a parable and he told them, he said, look here, even the devil realized that a kingdom divided cannot stand. If the enemy divided against itself, he can't win. Well, all those people came together in a line because it was in the northern atmosphere representing principality, representing spiritual weakness. They came up against it to stop and suppress us. But I come today to tell you, no matter what principality in this low country area, it ain't going to stop what God has to sign for us to do. Right. We're going to overcome. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to be victorious. That's right. It ain't going to be no sweat. It's going to be growth. Mm. It ain't going to be about entertainment. Ooh, amen. Amen right there. Amen. Because God ain't going to use the choir to bring the deliverance. That's right. the word. Hallelujah. It's going to be his word. Right. If his word reflected out of the hearts of those believers. Right. 
The one that said, you know what? I'm going to take your word and apply it to my life, and I'm going to change. And that's going to draw somebody. Hallelujah. So there's things that's fighting in the atmosphere. There's things that's fighting in the unseen realm that's stopping your blessing from coming. Because if you don't deal with what's surrounding you, and you don't deal with the hidden issues that's under you, then the only thing that's stopping your blessing is what's above you. It's time to break through. Yes, sir. Come on, pull out your battering ram. When they was going up here cities, <laughs> and, and then the gate was the strongest thing. They would take out battle rams and, and they would hit it up against it and keep hitting it up against it. I'm telling you, just keep on praying till you get a breakthrough. Yes, sir. And they just keep on hitting that thing until finally it bust open. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it burst open. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't even caught that. But anyhow, <laughs> hallelujah, praise the Lord. But, but what I'm trying to show you is that you have to prevail. You have to travail. It ain't going to be easy. You would think that Daniel would have got a breakthrough on day one. But I come to tell you, he did. He just didn't get the rewards of it until later. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. Y'all don't want to talk to me up here in the day. Maybe I'm quoting too many scriptures for y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. But on day one, the Lord said, I heard you, but I like you, Daniel. I saw that you travailed. Even though you ain't got your reward from your prayer, you ain't got the answer from your prayer, it didn't stop you from praying. Right. Not a one and done. <laughs> and so they overcame. They trusted God. Even though they had a formidable army against them. Even though there was joy in alliance against them. But yet still, we prevail. I don't care what I'm coming up to get you. What's above you, what's below you, or what's around you. Stay centered on God. He's going to see you through all those campaigns. Because we know how the story ends. <laughs> Y'all should shout right there. I said, we know how the story ends. Yes, Lord. Don't y'all know how this story is? We're victorious. They was victorious. They won. They came into the land of Canaan. They came into that promised land. They came into the land of the giants and defeated their giants. Defeated them all. I don't care what giant come up against you, just because I'm short. Ah, but my God is big. Go ahead. In my eye. I know you was going to win that song. <laughs> Hallelujah. I knew you was going to say that part in that song. But that's how our God is. Yes. He's awesome. And so therefore, we have to know who we serve. And we have to know who we're fighting against. And so don't get distracted knowing that the victory is yours. Yes. I was telling the other people, I said, there was a sermon I preached about four or five years ago about coming into the land of Canaan. And how that our mindset was so small, God had to let giants occupy our promised land mm. until we was ready. Yes. Because if we would have built houses in that land, there would have been small. But giants built big stuff. That's right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. In other words, you would have had a shack if you went in there. But a giant made you a mansion. Yes, sir. So when you came into your promised land, you possessed your mansion. Y'all don't want to talk up here.
Hallelujah. Y'all ever seen them trailers in the movies? Y'all ever seen the trailer? Yeah. That's a little story they give you of what's to come. They kind of pique your interest. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit will give you a, a trailer too. All right. To show you what's to come. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I see the cluster so big. They had to take two people to care. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you say. Hey. Hallelujah. And I knew one of them could have well, take care of me and my whole household. Yes, sir. Come on, can y'all imagine a cluster? Y'all know what a cluster is? Cluster That's you know them little branches in on a the grape there, you get a whole bag of grape, and you break off one. That's a cluster. They clustered up together and they grouped together. But one cluster was so big, it took two of them to carry it. Wow. I, I'm trying to get you to scratch your mind for what he has in store for you. And that was just a preview. Remember, Joshua and Caleb carried it. That's right. Y'all don't want to talk up here. Right. God ain't going to let those who don't believe carry this stuff. Don't hear it, God. You can't handle it. Because your feet can't pick it up. Yes, sir. I say you can't handle it because your feet can't pick it up. Mm. Can I get an amen right amen. there? Amen. The other ten that was uh that was five in the land didn't have the faith to lift it up. Because mm. the only thing they was distracted by was the size of the giant. Yeah. Go ahead. Now. Instead of focusing on their God. But the two that was focused on that God had a faith to lift up them grapes and bring it back and say, hey, they might be giant and we ain't no grasshopper. If God be for us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We shall be victorious. Every word that raised up in judgment against me shall be condemned. Yes, sir. Oh Lord, hallelujah! I don't mean, I, 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 oh, I don't mean no harm, hallelujah! But, 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 but a praise report is what God has ready for you. Go ahead. Yes. I say a praise report. If you just step into it and believe God got a praise report, yes, sir. you can be the anchor in the kingdom news. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk right now. I said, you can be the anchor in the kingdom news. In other words, the only thing y'all do is read the teleprompter. Yes, sir. About the victory and the praise. Oh, come on. Because God will give you a praise report. That's right. It's already written out for you. Yes, sir. Mm. I thought somebody would shout on that. Yes, sir. But if we stay distracted, we expose so much. Mm. Home, finance, dreams, future. If they would have stayed distracted, they would have never entered in to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Achan got distracted. Come on. Yes, and when he got distracted, he was attacked. The same thing happened right now. Only thing he's doing is waiting to distract you away, and then he'll attack you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close on this one. In the garden, he didn't attack Adam and Eve until he distracted them. That's right. That's all right Once he distracted her, then he was able to attack her. Hmm. All right. Did God say? <laughs> oh, did he say that you would die? Surely you won't die. But he got him distracted about, oh, but if you eat this, you become as God. But I'm already God. <laughs> Hallelujah, he already made me a God. That's right. That's right. We had immortality. Yeah. Yeah. Death had not even come in. Yeah. They had power to walk over animals. <laughs> Hello? None could bite them, none could harm them, none could kill them. They were already God. And then he got them distracted about, oh, come on, be something they already were. Because he wanted to take the authority in this world. Yes, sir. And now that's why they call Satan the God of this world. Come on. Who has blinded the minds of those that believe it not. Oh, wow. But he loves you. Come on. God is the original gangster. Y'all don't want to talk. He's the original OG. 
I know somebody will get that. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. For my God is awesome. Yes, he is. So don't get distracted because he's an attack going to come. As soon as you get distracted, there comes the attack. Yes, sir. The enemy gets you so far. Ooh, I'm I, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm going to take the frustration out of ministry. Mm. Yes, Lord. That thing reclicked what Chief told me about us a, a couple months ago. He, he, he was prophesying, he said, I'm going to take the I mean, take the frustration out of your ministry. So God's about to release that frustration out of your ministry. What do you mean? The things that used to get you distracted ain't going to get you distracted anymore. You ain't going to feel so frustrated about it. You, you feel overwhelmed about stuff. And now you can't minister like you should minister. Y'all notice that when they get you to strike like that, you almost about to slip. Like 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 Tania. She was about to slip, thought that I was she kind of about to pass her door. And she was about to say something. But then when she looked and saw it was me, she said, You just saved me. Because she was distracted. Oh, come on. I know Cedric on this ain't big. I told you he'll bring you in there. Hallelujah. But I'm watching and observing. And hallelujah. And because she was described that she almost, but the Lord brought her back. Hallelujah. If you stay distracted, you lose focus, enemy comes in and attack you, and then you cry. Amen. About your own decision. Yes, 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 yes. Quit making poor decisions Amen. in this new season. Amen. Amen. I told you I had three points, right? Those were the three points. So you go back and you rehearse those. You deal with your central campaign. Deal with what's surrounding you. Deal with your southern campaign. What's below the surface cause those issues to come up in your central campaign. Those underlying stuff that cause you to do all the things that you were doing so you don't go back to it in your northern campaign. The things that are stopping you from advancing in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You said all that was in the book of Joshua? Yes, it was. <laughs> Hallelujah. All of it was there. It just hid. You remember now? I'm that dumb ass. I know y'all on Facebook just thought I cursed. But I'm talking about that donkey that Balaam was riding on. And the Bible called him a dumb ass. Hello? I'm the one that give you a warning that there's a, an angel with a sword that's coming. And if you don't listen to me, you want to go into destruction. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I know my rage just went up on that one. Because mm. the preacher just cussed. <laughs> but I'm all in Scripture. Right. Never cuss at all. I'm just saying, I'm that animal that seems ignorant. But I'm seeing stuff you can't see. Amen. And I'm, 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 I'm the one that's carrying you. Oh, come on. I'm the one taking you. Yes, sir. Off the ministry, off the word. Hallelujah, off the leadership. Come on, off the pastoral anointing. I'm the one carrying you. And then you hit me because you don't like the direction I'm taking you in. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you beating on me. Passing all on me. Why you always talking about me? You beating on me. But I'm the one taking you. And if I stop, I'm stopping for a reason. Yes, sir. It's amazing. Y'all were rolling on the horse. Y'all have seen people ride on the horse, right? Y'all see sometimes they distract them, but the horse keep on going. They ain't got to tell her, hey, look out there. There's a stone right there. <laughs> There's a cliff right there. That horse can go around a cliff and never fall off because he's focused. All right. Just because the rider is distracted. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to talk to me up in here today, but we're about to close out right now. Amen? Amen. But I just wanted to show y'all, hallelujah, that just don't beat up on me. <laughs> Amen? Every now and then y'all can come around and say, Pastor, here, here's a prophet offering. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Y'all want to hear that. They don't want to sow into the prophet. There was a time when they would come, and every time a prophet gave a word, they would sow back into the prophet. You know, we had a prophet offering bucket right here. The thing had been closed for the last couple of years. Hello. There was a 
time when we were so worried, that word was just not normal, but it's something that was changing us. And they would come and they would put money in my head. I know. Be like, oh, there you go, talking about money again. <laughs> yeah, but when the blessings start flowing your way, you ain't complaining. Paul said, we sold uh, that spiritual. Why shouldn't you sold that natural? Hello. If I'm giving you something that was profound to change your life, why wouldn't you sew back here? Wow. Isn't it amazing when that psychiatrist go down deep and tell you, yeah, because you had an issue with your, your little sister when y'all were five and she pulled, cut your hair, and that's why you had this problem, and then all of a sudden, you paying her all that money? <laughs> Hello. But we reveal you something where well, the God has shown and nobody else can reveal. We can sit there and just listen to you eventually confess and forgot you told it. And then she repeated it back to you. Y'all don't want to talk right here. Because they done went through there and they examined. I ain't got no, no problem with someone who, who mastering their, in their craft. Of, you know, they went to school and did all that. But I know God can reveal stuff that's hidden too. He'll show stuff that nobody knows. All right. Praise God. But I thank y'all for coming on Facebook Live. Um, please, I, I'm talking to you. I'll make a plea out to you. Visit our website. And don't just go there, but hit the donation button. Click it and sow into the ministry. There's some that's been uh, uh, gleaning and has not uh, restored anything. You've been building up faith. You've been building up uh, 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 understanding and revelation, but you have never sold anything back. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. And God has been pressing it on your spirit to do so. You come in weekend after weekend, but you never, you sit at your house. Uh, hallelujah. But here the electric and the lights and the air conditioning and, and the mortgage and all that still need to be paid so you can sit in your house and listen to us on Facebook Live. Has God not never touched your heart to sow into this ministry? Hello. When we're making it do by the people who show up. Nah, I ain't chastising you because I hate you. I'm chastising because I love you. And I'm hoping I'll provoke you enough to bring some change. No, no, take that back. No change. No. It's growth. Because <laughs> y'all might start putting quarters and nickels on it. Come on, just a little humor. Y'all can laugh about something. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we'll see you next week. We love you. Be blessed. Visit us at the website. Thank you. And God bless.